Hi, I'm Stuart Lynch. This is the fourth of six parts in a series covering version control using Xcode with Git. In this episode, we're going to take a look at creating a GitHub account and using Xcode to create a remote repository and push our local repository up to the remote. We'll also find out how to perform a commit and a push in unison and see how you can download a single branch from your remote repository to your local computer. If this is something you want to learn, then keep watching. The first thing I want to say in this section is that Git is not GitHub. GitHub is just a location to remotely push up your local Git repositories. There are other such services or locations. Bitbucket is another one I've used. Some developers and companies host their own. GitHub, however, is arguably the most recognized one, so that's what I'm going to be showing you. The first thing you need to do if you do not already have a GitHub account is to go to github.com and sign up. It's recently been acquired by Microsoft and subsequently the ability to maintain your own private as well as public repositories has been made available to everyone for free. The sign up process is straightforward. You'll need a unique username and email. And I already have a GitHub account, but for the purposes of this video, I'm going to create a new one in the name of Createch Solutions. You are going to have to verify your account by solving a difficult puzzle and select a plan. If you're an individual developer, the free plan is all you need. Just answer the few questions to complete the setup and then respond to the email that gets sent. I won't bother you with the details here as I'm sure you can all do that. You also will get notified when you start using Xcode to access GitHub that simple password access to GitHub via Xcode will soon be depreciated. So you'll need to follow the link in the depreciation notice you get to create a personal access token. This is beyond the scope of this tutorial, but the instructions are clear. With your email verified, you're good to go. We're going to let Xcode create our repositories, so we can go back to Xcode now. Within Xcode, choose Preferences from the Xcode menu, then go to the Accounts tab. Click on the plus button to add a new account and choose GitHub from the list provided. Enter your account username and password and sign in. You're now all set up to start pushing your projects to a remote repository. Within Xcode, you can return to the now familiar Source Control Navigator and right click on your project name. Choose Create, whatever your project name is, Remote. The repository name will be the same name as your Xcode project, but feel free to change that. You can enter a description, and I'll show you where that appears on GitHub, and then choose if you want the project to be public or private. If it's public, then anyone on GitHub will be able to see and download your code. I'm going to leave it as public, and the remote name convention is to leave it as origin. Click on Create. Xcode then contacts GitHub, creates the repository, and pushes your local copy up to the repository. Note that I was on the master branch when I created this repository. This is important, as you'll see in just a minute. Let's see what it looks like on GitHub. I see now on my account I have one repository. That description we entered, well, it's here. You also see that the branch I'm looking at is the master branch and that the last commit I made was 29 minutes ago when I merged the development branch. If I go to switch branches, it appears that only the master branch was committed. That's because I was on the master branch when the repository was created and pushed up to GitHub. Returning now to Xcode and our version control navigator, I'll check out development and choose push from the source control menu, and I'll push this branch up to GitHub. Back in GitHub again, I'll refresh the page, and under the branch menu, I see two different branches, and I can switch between them if I wanted. Let's return now to Xcode once more and make a change and perform both a commit and a push all at once. While still on the development branch, let's return to the content view and make a change in that navigation link again to make it blue. This time I'll select 
commit again from the source control menu. This should be pretty familiar by now. You enter a comment for the commit, but this time I also check push to remote and then click on commit. This will accomplish both a commit and a push to GitHub. Back on GitHub, I can now switch to the development branch and see that my latest commit is indeed there with the comment that I just used. I have a number of options for downloading this project if I'm on another computer or for some reason I have deleted it from my computer. I can choose to save it and open it directly in Xcode. I could open it in desktop, which is something we'll cover in the final video in this series, or you can simply download the zip file. Let's choose that option for now. It has downloaded it to my downloads folder, and not only has it saved it in a folder with my project name, but it's also using the branch name that I was on. This project is identical to the development branch that you we were on just before. In the next video, we'll take a little sidestep into Terminal, where I'll show you how to set up a gitignore file that specifies what files can safely not be stored in your Git repository. The final video will take a look at the Git desktop GUI client that helps you manage your remote repositories and ensure that you have all branches in your project. I hope you've enjoyed this video and have learned something. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. That will encourage me to keep on creating more like this in an effort to help new and existing iOS developers hone their skills and move on to the next level. I am most active on Twitter, so be sure to follow me there and get all the latest news of what I'm up to.